Hi, this is Greg from OnlineLanguageAcademy.com and today you are going to learn the best way to stay motivated when you're learning English. Now we have a special guest on the show today who is a, an expert in this field. So I'd like to say hello to Jack from Tofluency.com. Hi, Jack. Hey, Greg. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us. So, hey, Jack, before we start, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about what you do? Sure. So, yeah, I'm Jack. I have a website called tofluency.com. And I've been teaching English for nearly 10 years now. So I taught in Spain for a couple of years. I am. And then the majority of my teaching has been online through my YouTube videos, my one to one lessons and online courses, too. Um, I'm originally from the UK, but I've been in America for over six years. So, yeah, I love it here. It's called Asheville in North Carolina. It has a lot of breweries. I think there are about 20 craft oh. breweries here now. It's a fantastic place for families. And, yeah, it's a small, thriving community. So, yeah, I really like it here. Yeah, it sounds a similar type of town to uh, to where I'm living at the moment in the States. It's less breweries here. Um, I think we have two nearby, but it's a, a nice place for, for families to, to grow up and to have kids. Where, where are you in the, in the States? What's uh, the town called? Uh, it's called Woodstock in Illinois. It's a suburb of Chicago. Oh, cool. And if you've ever seen Groundhog Day, the movie, it was completely set in our town in Woodstock. Oh, very cool. So, very nice, very nice little community. So, yeah, I mean, if you are new to the channel, uh, as I said, I'm, I'm Greg. I also, I'm English, living in the States, and I have a business called Online Language Academy, and we help students reach a high level of spoken English, and we do that uh, through conversation classes via Skype with native teachers. Um, and yeah, so if your objective is to reach a high level of English, I uh, recommend you subscribe to Jack's channel on YouTube and, uh, and also to my channel. Um, so Jack, a lot of students do have that objective of reaching a high level of fluency in English or in spoken English. But I think one of the main obstacles or problems that a lot of students have is motivation. You know, staying motivated throughout their journey to learn English. Do you, do you agree with that? Have you noticed that? Oh, yeah, that? definitely. Definitely. You, uh, there's something I call cycles of learning, and it's when um, somebody who's learning English, they'll get really motivated, mm. let's say in January. Yeah. That's when a lot of people feel like, okay, this year I'm going to, to do this. I'm going to reach a C1 level according to that European framework, which is an advanced level. So they'll get really excited, buy some programs, buy some courses, sign up at the, the language school. But come February or March, around this time of the year, as we're recording, motivation seems to, to drop. Yeah. That initial ambition just goes away. And this could go away for a month or two months, six months, a year, a few years before that process repeats itself. So I definitely see this all the time. Learners have problems with motivation. And it's not just about English language learners. It's about everyone and any kind of activity, especially a goal which requires dedication over a long period of time, like language learning does. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely see numbers. So many new students in January and and again in September, that's another time when you know, the summer's gone, it's the new academic year and students are super motivated to, to start, uh, you know, signing up, doing English classes, doing everything possible. But it's, um, it's, it's yeah, it, it's keeping going. That's the big problem, really. Um, so, yeah, have you, uh, what can we do? What, what can, do you have any advice to our learners of how they can go past that two or three month mark, how they can stay motivated in their English learning? Yeah, I think, I think the key is, um, to try and summarize it, is to 
make English part of your life, to make it a, like an everyday thing, something that you do on a, on a daily basis. Because if you do really want to, to reach that level, then that's what it requires. It requires you to do something every day. Now, this doesn't mean that we have to like use all our discipline and our willpower and energy to make it happen. Because the smart way to do this is to get into the habit, to get into the habit of doing things that, that we enjoy, which might just mean listening to one of your videos every morning for 15 minutes. So having that on while you're on the way to work, while you're you know on a train, for example, and just to get in the, into the habit of doing those kind of things, to make it as enjoyable as possible. Um, and I think in order to, to get to that stage, you have to be able to align this with your goals and to use your goals as motivation to really think about why you want to learn, why it's important, and to use that motivation to make changes that are going to last for the long term. Not just to get that initial motivation to study for three hours a day for a week or so and then to feel completely exhausted, but instead to use that motivation to build up those habits that are going to really push you on over the long term and not just like a, a short term fix. Yeah. What, what are some common goals that people have? Because, I mean, so many students, like new students or so many uh, people say to me, oh, I just I just really want to have a high level of English. And it's almost like there's there's nothing really pushing them. They just think they should have a high level of English. You know, what are some common goals that, that you could choose I suppose yeah so a, a goal might be to reach um, a c1 level and that just means that you can basically have a conversation about most topics without making too many mistakes and you can understand what other people are saying people will listen to you and know that you're a non-native speaker mm. but they'll know that you have a high level and that you can really just handle yourself and to to deal with these situations and to have conversations so, I mean, it's a great goal to have. A lot of people have this goal, but we can go deeper and, and ask ourselves why. Why is this important? You know, why do I want to have this? And for some people, it might not be that important. For some people, you might be listening to this thinking, oh, if it takes a lot of work, then it's not worth it. But for those who are, who are watching this and think, yeah, I really want to do this because of the following reasons which might be for work, it might just be for the love of the language, it might be because you want to achieve something that's really incredible. But to go deep with the reason why will help you stay motivated over, over that long term. And you can keep going back to your why and reminding yourself of why you're doing this, but also helping you build the habits at the start too. Yeah, okay. So you suggest reminding yourself of, of the why you know, maybe even, I don't know, write it down somewhere and just yes. go back to that saying all this work I'm doing, it's going to lead to something very positive for me yeah, on I'd, a personal level. I, and another thing as well, which, which you can do over the long term is, and anyone learning a language will know this, that there are times when you just feel terrible about the way you had a conversation with someone. Yeah. It might be in a class and the teacher asks you a question and you just couldn't say it. Or you're at a language exchange and you can't find those words and phrases to explain what you want to say. And a lot of the time we can use this as like a sign to say, oh, I'm not good at languages and to feel really down about it. But what I suggest that people do is this, to use that as motivation to improve, to tell yourself in three months, I want to be able to handle that situation better. I want to be able to, to have that conversation and feel good about myself. So instead of letting these little things um, get you down, or I say little things, but they can be quite big, they can be very meaningful. But instead of letting them get you down, you should use them as motivation to actually make changes and make improvements. Yeah, yeah, I remember giving a presentation at school once where I was completely unprepared I thought I'll be fine it'll be fine I don't need to prepare it I'll I'll stand up and I'll give the presentation <clears throat> and it was terrible it was the worst feeling in the world ever and yeah and I, it's like what you say I used that feeling of just this horrible feeling 
to think I never want to feel like that again. And that was motivation to, you know, the next time I, I did a presentation, prepare it well and feel better about myself. And I, I think it's very similar to what you were saying. You know, it's, we've all had a conversation in a foreign language where you just think, oh my word, that was an embarrassment. That was terrible. And, you know, if you use that to, to make sure it, it doesn't happen again or, you know, as motivation, then that's a, a good a good trick i think a good a good tip yeah definitely and I, as you say it happens all the time and in, in other areas of life too so it, it, it's it can be powerful you know it can go one of two ways it can either make you feel down and, and give you that sinking feeling and you can use that as like a reason to stop or you can use it as motivation yeah now we've we've talked a little bit about how to um, how to stay motivated in um, yeah in, in in learning English, but in a, in the long term, when you are learning English, when you're a beginner, I think it's very easy to see the the progress you're making. You know, in the first year, you can <clears throat> easily see how much you've progressed in the first year from knowing nothing to knowing this much. But I think uh, we we talk about a plateau, don't we? Which is like a kind of when you reach an upper intermediate level, you stop seeing the progress that you're making. And I think this can sometimes be a, a motivation killer. And I think when you reach this, this plateau, you know, you learn a lot and then whoop, you reach the plateau, I think a lot of students at that point kind of just drop off and think, yep. I'm going to stop. And I think part of it as well is, is the way that a lot of language schools around the world test learners and tell them what level they are. Because a lot of those tests are multiple choice exams that don't require real conversations and don't require any type of pronunciation. They don't, they don't test that in a lot of cases. Yeah. So a lot of language schools will say, okay, you are now pre-intermediate. You have this, this B1 level of English based on the fact that you have taken this multiple choice test. And most learners go through all this training without any real speaking practice. So then they feel, okay, if I'm an intermediate speaker, um, if this is the level I have, then I should be able to have conversations. And then they go out into the real world and realize that, you know, they haven't had any practice speaking. They haven't worked on their pronunciation. They haven't listened to a real conversation. They've listened to those CDs mm. that, that you get in language schools. Yeah. And then this whole new world is open to them where they think, oh my goodness, you know, I don't have the level I thought I had. And a lot of people can have this B1 or a B2 level of grammar, but their speaking is, is A1. Yeah. Their listening is, is A1 or A2. And I think that's part of it. I think that's part of the reason. But let's just say someone goes through a language school, they work on all areas of their English, they, they all have a B1 level of English or a B2 level, speaking and listening and everything else, then they still feel this, this plateau, like something has happened, like they're not progressing as quickly as they were before. And I think part of it is just the fact, again, that this, this, there's a new world that opens up, that they realize there are, English is really subtle, that you can be sarcastic that the intonation can really change things, that there are phrasal verbs that you use in America, but not in the UK. And it goes on and on and on. And it, it's one of these things that it does take a long time to reach that C1 level. And when I say a long time, I mean, you know, the hours that you put in, not just how many years, but the hours that you put yeah. in and what, and what you do with this. So that plateau is very common. And uh, I think it's it's those two reasons mainly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a common expression is that the more the more I know, the more there is to learn, or the the less I think I know. You know, and I think you're right. You, you're opened up to a whole new world. You start talking uh, more, ad, oh, start having more advanced conversations with with native speakers, and you think, wow, yeah, you miss all those subtleties. You you realise there's so many new phrasal verbs that are less common than the ones they teach in the typical textbooks and, and you just think wow it's it's just a whole new world of English out there but yeah but 
keep going. I think is the um, uh, is the the advice right? Keep, keep yeah, going. and and use your English. I think when you reach this level, it it means that you can use it in a meaningful way. You know, it means that let's just say you want to learn how to play the guitar, then take that training in English. I, I do this with my languages now that, well, with Spanish, where I'm at a level where I can use it. So when I learn how to edit my videos, I do this in Spanish now. Um, I listen to, to podcasts in Spanish. You know, this is something that you can do at this level where you're not having to, to think about textbooks. Instead, you're just using your English. And that way, you're, it's going to be a more enjoyable process. And it's just going to be a way that you can easily fit into your life, too. Because there are lots of things that people do in their native language that they could be doing in English. You know, things like taking courses and training, watching TV, reading books, reading the news. You know, if if you think about how much time you spend doing these things, playing computer games is a big one, too. Yeah. If you think about how much time you spend doing these things, then this is how much time you could be spending actually doing stuff in English as well. And then when you do that, it just gives you this great context. Everything is in context. It's real. And you're using your English instead of like trying to learn new phrasal verbs from a list. You know, you're yeah. using it in a real way and learning phrasal verbs and idioms and expressions and everything else you need to know in a really natural way. Yeah. Yeah. This, I mean, a lot of a lot of times I hear expressions like, oh, you know, things are crazy at work. I don't have time for English, you know, blah, blah, blah. Just I haven't got time in my life for English. And as you say, if you integrate English into your normal life, you've always got time. You know, you instead of doing certain things in your native language, do them in English. You know, you drive Definitely. to work and listen to the radio or listen to podcasts in English in English, you know, or, or yeah, video, video games, you're talking about the video games where you can talk to people online, that people that you're playing against, or? Hey, no, it could be anything really, like, uh, I used to have, you might know this, Championship Manager, oh, or yeah. it's called Football Manager, yeah, yeah, you can, I, I put that into Spanish for a year, and played that, uh, yeah. And then you just pick up on these phrases that are repeated. It's a repetition. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of computer games, I'm I'm not that good at computer games and I don't play them that often. But I do know that a lot of them have dialogue in them now and they have certain instructions that you have to follow. Yeah. Um, and it's just, yeah, to just change that language. Just yeah. change the language, the settings. Brilliant. Okay. Right, Jack, I know we, we both like a good quote so uh do you have for our viewers a, a motivational quote yeah um i'll leave a i'll give you a, a longer quote that you can leave in the description okay but i'll keep this one short and it's success is, is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal now when i heard this the first time i had to think about it because it's, it's not that easy to understand exactly what it means. But success is a progressive realization of a worthy ideal. So a worthy ideal is your goal, to reach that C1 level. And the progressive realization just means you making progress toward this goal. So what it's saying here is success is anyone who sets a goal and works towards it and makes progress with it. So Sometimes you can, as a learner or doing any kind of big task or trying to achieve any goal, you can sometimes get down when you think about where you are now and where you want to be. Yeah. But if you focus on the fact that you are actually making progress, then that is huge motivation in itself. Um, and I like to say you're a successful English learner if you are making progress toward the goal that you want to achieve. Okay. So it doesn't matter, I mean, if your goal is to reach, as we talked about earlier, to reach a C1 level, and you're currently at, stuck at B, B1 or B2, we're not focusing on the fact that it's, it's a way away, you know, you've got a long way to go. The success is that day by day, or class by class, or you know, week by week, you're getting a little bit, just a little bit nearer that goal. Yeah. And a lot of it depends on how quickly you want to progress as well. 
you know, but to understand that you are progressing is is the, the key to it all. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that helps make you feel better about yourself, which in turn motivates you and makes you want to study more. And it's a, it's a, exactly. a, nice, a nice little nice little circle. Yeah. yeah. It's like you, you gain that momentum. Yeah. And it gives you motivation to want to, to progress even more. Okay. Great. Yeah. Who, uh, who, where's that quote from? Yeah, I should say really, shouldn't I? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's Earl Nightingale. And I think, so Earl Nightingale, he, his voice is very, um, I can't think of the word, but he's, he's a great narrator. He's a great speaker and talker. And he has, I think it's something called 30 minutes that will change your life. It's really clickbait style headline, but the information in there is incredible. And as a learner who's watching this, you'll be able to understand what Earl Nightingale is saying because of the way he speaks and the language he uses. Um, so it's a really good video to watch. Okay. Yeah, we'll uh, have to leave a link in the description for that. Yeah. yeah. Great. Okay. All right, Jack. Um, we'll wrap it up there then. Uh, it's been great having you on the, uh, on the YouTube channel. So thanks very much for your time. Yes, yeah, my pleasure. All right, great. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Well,